Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Before we get into the second segment, I want to remind you yet again, let me get rid of this real quickly, to leave a tip or donation or consider leaving a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. He's a huge support and benefit to the network, both me and my fellow podcasters as well. So it, everything that you have is greatly appreciated and willing to give is greatly appreciated, most importantly. Now, getting into another segment I'm really happy to share with you guys. For the first time in the history of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, I, Chris Shepard, will be analyzing my very own personal fantasy football mock draft. I did this one a couple of days ago, and I'm really, really excited to analyze it, break down some of the players I drafted who I think will have huge breakout seasons or maintain their fantasy stability. So, I also really want to kind of show you guys the process that goes into fantasy football mock drafts. So, I'm really excited to jump right into it. Unfortunately, though, it is kind of cut off in this image I have for you guys. But I will kind of get into some of my bench guys as well. So, don't worry there. So, as you can see, this is my team. I'm sorry if it is a little blurry. But, as you can see, I also got an A-plus grade. So, I'm kind of going to be analyzing... What, which players and who on my bench are kind of guys who I really like and think will have great, fantastic seasons or maintain, like I said, a stability. Starting off at the QB position, why not draft probably one of the best QBs, if not the best QB in the NFL right now in Patrick Mahomes. Always steady, although by his lofty standards last year, kind of was a down year. I know he was trying to implement so many different receivers. He didn't really get going until kind of like the latter half of the playoffs. But when he's on, he's on, and he should be bringing in a lot more talent to that wide receiving core. As you can see on my bench, one of those guys is there. So he's going to be bringing in more and more talent. And I think that the Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver core should make some stellar progress. They still have Travis Kelsey. So there. But last year, Patrick Mahomes had 280.22 fantasy points. He averaged 17.5 fantasy points per game. So he's kind of right at that level that you want your fantasy QB to have. But also, he's just... A guy who can rely on on any given Sunday. Maybe, you know, he will have those games where he's disappointing and some of his receivers don't live up to expectations, but he's still Patrick Mahomes, for God's sake. My running back is one of those guys who I think is a will he or won't he kind of guy. He is, he does have kind of a newer quarterback, but I'm really, really intrigued to see how he improves because he was one of the best running backs in the league a couple of years ago. So I kind of want to see what he looks like coming off of injury. Jonathan Taylor, last year had 137.4 overall fantasy points. He averaged 13.7 a game. So he's one of those guys who is kind of one of those guys you want to take a flyer on, but you really have to see with him because... In his at his best, he's one of the best in the league. A oh, thousand yard rusher, a uh, solid, solid player. But when he's injured, he doesn't offer you that much production. He obviously this is his first full season with Anthony and Richardson, so we have to see how their partnership develops. He is one of the better receiving running backs in the league, so that's why perhaps you could take a flyer on him. But he still is one of the riskier options in my team. Behind him is a guy in Gus Edwards who moves to the LA Chargers. I like that they lose Austin. And Eckler. They replaced them with a guy in Gus Edwards who is doing his thing over at Baltimore, part of that running back rotation over there. I think he's a very good, solid RB2 on a roster. But a guy who I'm really, really, really intrigued to see uh, next season is Debo Samuel. Obviously, he had a lot of contract uh, rumors surrounding him come draft time. Will he leave San Fran? He ultimately stays with a receiving core that is one of the most potent in the league. Only 183.7 fantasy points overall last year for him. 12.2 fantasy points per game. So as you can see, he's one of those guys who does not necessarily benefit from having that experienced wide receiver core around him. Obviously, Brock Purdy wants to spread the ball all around the field. And Debo Samuel might 
lose a little bit of that uh, production, but he still is a premier wide receiver option in a fantasy team. But a guy who last year I personally had on my fantasy football team, a hidden gem last year, a breakout star last year in Nico Collins of the Houston Texans. I think he's going to have another very huge year with his partnership with CJ Stroud only going up from here. 180.4 fantasy points last year, 12 fantasy points per game, but he has the ability to just turn on the Jets and give you one of the better fantasy performances you'll have in any given week. He is stellar. Looking at my defense, this is also one of the best in the league in the San Francisco 49ers, kind of a steal in my opinion in this draft. 7.8 fantasy points averaged per game. They have all the, the the levels of the defense, premier players at the position, whether it be Nick Bosa up front, Fred Warner, Telenoa Hufanga, Charvarius Ward in the secondary, holding it down. This is a, a fantasy defense who, like Patrick Mahomes at the QB position, is one you can lock in if should you if and should you draft them any given Sunday, they can produce for you. Kind of looking at my bench, as you can see, kind of cut off there. I it brought in Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley is going to be very interesting as he moves to Tennessee. I think that he will really help a young QB in Will Levis be one of his top receivers along with DeAndre Hopkins over there at Tennessee. So I'm really excited to see how he develops with Tennessee. 153.9 fantasy points last year at Jacksonville. 9.1 fantasy points. So that's kind of a good production-wise in a struggling Jacksonville team. And I think those points can be produced again in a developing Tennessee team. So look out for Calvin Ridley on your draft boards. Another guy who I'm really excited about hasn't played a snap in the NFL just yet, but can be the next Tyree kill for the Kansas City Chiefs, in my humble opinion. Xavier Worthy, I think that him and Patrick Mahomes will be one of the better QB wide receiver duos in the league come the latter half of the season. Give Xavier Worthy time to develop. He is kind of one of those gadgetry kind of guys who can return kicks, be used anywhere along the wide receiver alignment. But look for him to be one of Patrick Mahomes' go-to targets later in the year as he continues to progress in Andy Reid's system. But that should just about do it. I hope this was a fantastic segment for you guys, getting to see a fantasy football team up close, drafted in the past couple of days with a good grade and my professional analysis and my personal opinion on some of these players. Coming up next on today's show, we have some very exciting segments. We are going to go over the fantasy basketball season, recap some of the breakout stars, the best overall team in terms of fantasy, and ultimately looking at the number one overall player in that department. Should be a good one. We will be right back to discuss all that.